Hi, my name is Ramos and I'm going to tell you about North Macedonia. If you want to skip my trip introduction, just use a timestamp on the timeline. We began our journey early in the morning. We had to wake up at around 1 am, which meant that I did not have any sleep, which was fine by me. We got into the car to drive from Konas to Vilnius. It all started weirdly with, with some bizarre yellow lights at the horizon. Anyway, we parked our car, walked to the airport, three random dudes tried to use an elevator, which was meant for one disabled person. You probably knew where all of this was going. They got stuck. Our plan was to fly from Vilnius to Amsterdam, then to Sofia and then by the car to a small town in North Macedonia. A rather long trip. We took off, landed in Amsterdam airport, which was one of the busiest in Europe. We didn't have a lot of time to change airplanes, we got stuck at the ID checkup, so I asked for help and we cut the line. My mom had an old ID, so she took longer at the checkup. At the end, it was all good. We really had to rush to our airplane because our gate was a long way away, but we managed to reach our gate on time. Cheers to the Bulgarian Airlines because they served us a free bottle of water, a sandwich and even a glass of wine. I felt like a little prince. Well, little princess shouldn't drink, I guess. I mean, I was happy. I was impressed with the view through the porthole. I have never seen such an amazing mountain range from above. We were reaching the capital of Bulgaria. Once we landed, I wasn't too fascinated with people. One guy simply opened a pack of cigarettes and threw a plastic wrap on the ground. I knew I shouldn't have judged the whole country by one stupid man. But, you know. Sofia was one of the largest cities I had visited. I liked the surroundings, mountains, villages, the sky, bridges. This is what I was hoping to see in North Macedonia, but I got so much more. We crossed the Bulgarian border and we were finally in North Macedonia. I'm going to talk about geography, economic situation, people, food and finally I'm going to give my conclusions. North Macedonia is a small country with less than 2 million people located in the Balkans. I'm not going into the details about its name, but long story short, Greece was not happy with its name, so they changed it to North Macedonia from simply Macedonia. We were staying in a small town called Berova. Five-star monastery hotel with amazing surroundings, beautiful view, cheap food and drinks. We had a walk during one of the evenings just to explore the surroundings. Forest, mountains, untouched nature. Can we really want more? We also visited a larger city named Strumitsa. <laughs> I was really excited to see the palm trees in real life. However, there were a lot of stray dogs and the streets we walked in were not very clean. Everyone was looking at us as if we were aliens. I had no problem with that though. We 
visited Smolar Falls, which is the highest waterfall in North Macedonia. We had to walk for around 15 minutes to reach it, but there were paths which would take 5 hours to complete. And you have to go back as well. You know what I liked the most during my time in North Macedonia? Kiwis and persimmons. By the way, some countries call them Japanese apples, Macedonians call them that too. I bought a kilo of kiwis for around 50 euro cents, but they were not ripe. Persimmons were even worse than that. I don't know if you ever had a mouth trying persimmon, but it was like that. I loved having seen them grow in real life. It just made me so gay. I loved it. <laughs> Also visited the capital of North Macedonia, Skopje. There are plenty of interesting places to see, for example, Memorial House of Mother Teresa, amazing main square with the biggest statue I had ever seen, bazaars and more. The statue for Alexander the Great was the most impressive thing for me. North Macedonia is a poor country. For example, the teachers make about half of what teachers in Lithuania make. Lots of houses are still heated by firewood, which give a rather nice but unhealthy smell early in the morning. The streets are rather dirty too. The roads are often narrow but without any holes, and much better than what we have in Lithuania. It makes sense because the base for the roads is very strong due to the rocks in the ground. North Macedonia uses Macedonian dinars as their currency. 60 Macedonian dinars are equal to about 1 euro. So you wouldn't find prices such as 420.69 dinars, because dinars are not divided into cents or similar parts of 100. During less than a week in North Macedonia I got a chance to meet a lot of great people, and everyone was very friendly, on the other hand not that many people speak English. So if you are like me you might have to use a translation app on your smartphone to communicate with others. Since North Macedonia is not in the EU, the mobile internet calls and messages are very expensive to other countries, so I suggest getting a local SIM card. There is one problem with that though, there are no prepaid cards, so you'll have to register on one of the local networks with your true name and identity number. I bought a Lika mobile SIM card with 15GB of data, a lot of minutes and messages for around 5 euros. It was more than enough for me. I wanted to buy a few things at the local market in Barovo, and I didn't fully understand what the seller said. I thought he said 500 dinars, so I asked him if that was 500, and the seller laughed and said it was 50. He could have easily tricked me, but he didn't, and I appreciate that a lot, and it says even more about North Macedonians. Let's begin with the best part about North Macedonia, the food. It's Balkan, which means we eat everything in huge amounts. The day we arrived at the hotel we had a bowl of salad, a humongous loaf of bread filled with pork, cooked with beer and a dessert. The food was included in the price for the hotel. We only had to pay for our drinks, which were very cheap. For example, one beer cost around 1 euro in, in the store and was about one and a half at the restaurant. To put it in perspective, one beer in Lithuania is about 4 euros in a restaurant. You can get a cheap 1 liter of wine for 1 euro. I think I should have recommended, but uh, it's very if you want to try it. Macedonians often have salad with fresh vegetables and goat cheese. It has a very powerful taste, but I love it. I would always try all varieties of cheese for breakfast at our hotel. We also tried baked beans, grilled sausages and meat with potatoes, loaves of bread with MSG, we also tried Macedonian pizza, which was full of fats and extremely delicious. On one of our dinners, four of us had so much food and each of us had a glass of wine or a beer and only paid 23 euros for four of us. 
When I say we had so much food, I mean it. I'm a kind of guy who tries to drink the whole refill machine when the refill is free. All in all, the food is filling, cheap and often contains meat. North Macedonia is an amazing country to visit for everyone who loves nature, sightseeing, great people and cheap prices from food to having a haircut. However, the country is still young and still trying to learn to walk, but it will succeed, I think. Just get yourself the local mobile operator to make your time easier. At the end of the day, I highly recommend visiting North Macedonia. If you enjoyed the video, like it, subscribe to our channel and let me know if you like to see the video about the Coronian Spit, one of the most beautiful places in the world. See you next time. Yeah, don't you?